today I'm going to show you how to avoid every single alarm or hazard in Back for Blood. Starting with a cop car. So if you take a look at the cop car here, it is currently alarmed. You can see the lights flashing. And we see we still have an intact window here. Now let's just pretend there was a bunch of stuff in here and we wanted to bust into this side of the window, right? Next to this car here. So what we're going to do is we're going to run all the way over here. And we're going to make sure we are at least 30 meters away. Over there. A little bit farther, just to be safe, right? You the best. Some people say 28. I'm going to say 30. And then you take a peek, and you're just going to shoot right where the window is. I even did let 29, and it seemed to work. And we even saw Knowledge's power kick in and do one damage to the window. Now, if you take a look here, the window's gone. But the car alarm is still active, so be careful. Now, let's start covering all the other things and answer all the questions that people have about hazards and back for blood. So now we're going to go over... So now let's go over all the different ways that we can clear out the birds. We'll start with frag grenades. Do frag grenades work? Frag grenades work. Let's see if shooting works. I have a shotgun here and I'm going to shoot at the birds and let's see if we get them. Shooting works. Just make sure you have a shotgun with a big spread. You can have a certain amount of birds that get away. I don't think it could be more than four. Five is testing your luck. Let's see if Molotovs work. Molotovs do not work. They will kill the birds, but it doesn't kill them fast enough. Let's see if flashbangs work. Flashbangs definitely work. And as you can see, flashbangs do damage. Let's see if firecrackers work. Firecrackers do not work. Let's see if pipe bombs work. Oh, let's see if I can bounce right to him. Oh boy. Ooh, I think that might have been a good one. Pipe bombs work. Let's see if propane tanks work on the birds. Propane tanks work on the birds. Let's see if gas cans work on the birds. They do not work on the birds. Not even a little bit. So let's start talking about a bunch of the other hazards in the game. One of which here is objectives like this. So if I were to lower the bridge, then a horde would come in and we would have to fight it, right? Another thing you can do, if you don't feel like you can take on the horde, is just use a toolkit. You do this, and then ta-da! Nice and quiet. Another one here is the Reeker. Stay away from the Reeker, because if that thing blows up when you are next to it, it's going to call a horde. The way you can tell it is one that calls a horde is if it doesn't have a weak spot. The wretches have a weak spot on their head, the exploders have a weak spot on their belly button, the Reekers don't have one. If a Reeker explodes on you, it's going to call a horde. Exploders won't call a horde, and neither will a wretch. And now let's talk about alarm doors. There's a couple of ways to handle alarmed doors. One of the ways here is just, again, to use the toolkit. Don't typically use the toolkit, though. Another thing you can do to get around an alarm door is to shoot around the door. So if you go pop, 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 a lot of times what happens is a zombie on the other side will break down the door. And as soon as a zombie hits an alarm door, it's deactivated. And if you're having trouble with this door in particular, you're shooting around it, it's not working, come over here. And try shooting like right over here. I swear that's what this little hole here is for is to make it so you can shoot at zombies and provoke them. Another thing to keep in mind with alarm doors is to try, is to, try to shoot low, right? Because if I'm shooting up like this, I'm way more likely to hit a door. But if I'm shooting low at their feet, I don't have to worry about that as much. See, this one here is a really common one for people to get stuck on. So what I like to do on this door is usually there's a zombie, yep, right in that corner. Now we got some extra ones here, but there's almost always a zombie in this corner. So I shoot right next to him not to kill him. And then they come in and they hit the door down for me. And now for sleepers here. You can actually see this sleeper lit up on the screen because I'm playing Carly. But something you can do for the sleepers is just make sure you're listening because they make really loud snarly sounds. They're not very subtle. So just make sure you check your corners before you go ahead and charge into a room. And then if you see them, you can come right up to them and punch them. They're not that scary. You just have to get to them before they get to you. Also, it's pretty normal for you to be able to punch them through walls. So if you're playing Carly and you see one on the other side of the wall, you might be able to take it out like that. Now I see the snitch down there. There's a lot of different ways to deal with snitches in this game. And I'll show you a couple of them here. So let me go ahead and use the toolkit again to bring down the bridge. And one such way to deal with them is you can lure them with firecrackers. So if I throw the firecrackers over here, you'll walk to them. Also, one thing you'll notice is you see how my teammates just fired that thing down like it was no big deal? If you are fast enough, you can just shoot the snitch before it has a chance to scream at you. So it'll be one, two, three, go, okay? One, two, three, go. Ooh, that was close. Also, the bots have a special feature where if they <laughs> shoot at a snitch, they don't alert it. I don't know why. I don't know if that's always going to be that way, but 
Bots will not alert a snitch if they shoot it. But like I was mentioning with the firecrackers, let's say you're dealing with those snitches that will always call a horde no matter what if they're alerted, even if you kill them. Firecrackers can help pull those snitches away to make it so you can get by them. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can deal with snitches, right? One of which is a flashbang. You do this, suddenly he's not calling anything anymore. Another way to deal with them is just stun him over and over again. Something else on the note of alerting enemies. This isn't necessarily alerting a horde, but something people gotta keep in mind when they play this game is if they come over here and they start making a bunch of noise like this shooting down, everything is gonna start swarming you from around here. So they'll start coming up, you see that? You gotta be careful if you start making noise with your loud guns. You will get swarmed on this area. I see people die all the time right here because they come out here and they start shooting down on stuff and they're not paying attention and then they get swarmed because zombies react to noise. Be it gunfire, explosions, what have you. Another thing you can do on the topic of preventing hordes is when these breakers show up, the same thing works with the hag. If you stun them, they're not gonna call a horde. See how there's no horde coming? You can stun lock them too. Just reset it. Easy peasy. Really, really easy way to handle a breaker, just like this. They can't do anything. This happens on Nightmare, this happens on Veteran, the whole shebang. Now, to show you what I'm talking about, I'm gonna let him charge, because you need to prevent him from doing a specific charge. You see that right there? Now he's gonna have like a yellow stream come out of his mouth. That's what calls the horde. So if you don't let him do that, there's no horde. But we didn't even have this barrier here. So, I mean, for all you speedrunners out there, if you know a breaker's coming, just nail him with a flashbang and then keep running. That way you can get outside of this circle here before you get stuck in it. Yeah, really all you gotta do is flashbang and bye. And I can do it again now. Now, with the hag, the way you do that is you take a look at your subtitles. You see, I can see all these people talking. We can also see action on the breaker itself. Here, if it dies, it'll say breaker death. There, you see exploder idle, exploder charge. So what'll happen with the hag is the hag is gonna scream up in the air. It'll say hag berserk. If you throw a flashbang when it says hag berserk, then it will be stunned for a long period of time. And then you can go ahead and just lay into it and it's not gonna call a horde. So let's try to stay out of sight here. Go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it. There you go, good job. Kill it. And then for one final tip here, it might be a little straightforward, but I swear it's so important, is if you see stuff, mark it. This was a sleeper here. Oh, there's a cop car here. By the way, you can jump on cop cars and you won't alarm them. There's birds here. Let your teammates know what's going on because if they don't know, then they might just run right into stuff. Let everybody on your team know so that they can see that big icon on their screen and I swear your games are going to go so much smoother. We do viewer games almost every single night on twitch.tv slash swingpoint. Link will be in the description and also the top comment for that. Please consider subscribing if these videos have helped you at all. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below or maybe I missed something. And then with that, thank you so much. You guys are the best and I'll see you in the next video that we do around here.